Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents X minus one Tonight, The Scapegoat by Richard Maples. Now, X minus one and The Scapegoat. The old guy didn't have a chance. All he could do was shield his head with his limp arms and moan while this other fellow, a husky young six-footer, gave him a vicious, cold-blooded beating. Hey! Hey, cut it out! You! Cut it out beating up an old man like that! I said cut it out! Now, now let go of him. Well, what have you got to say for yourself before I belt you as hard as you hit the old man here? Well, hey, hey, you, wait! Wait, you know, God, hold him! Uh, hey, you, you all right, Pop? Are you okay? What happened? Was, was he trying to rob you or something? Uh, look, look, you'll be all right now. You'll be okay. You're lucky I came along then. No cops anywhere. Uh, okay, come on, old timer. Uh, Up on oh, your feet. Uh, oh. You're going home with me. I suppose it seems callous to think of it. But this old man was just what I'd been looking for. A brutal assault and a helpless old man. And I was the hero. Just what I needed. You see, I'd just come from a meeting with the city fathers and the commissioner of the police department. And old man Jones, my publisher promptly yanked the rug out from under me and chickened. I'd written the articles panning the city's handling of the juvenile delinquency problem because Joan had to be in his bonnet to be the mayor. Now, when the heat was on, he weaseled out. We had a few words, Jones and I, and I quit. But now I had him, and I with the story, no cops anywhere, and a young bruiser beating up a defenseless old man. I figured I'd take him home, let my wife fix him up, keep him around the house until the story broke. What's the idea of... Oh. All right, take it easy, honey. It's all right. This whole guy just needs some patching up, that's all. Come on, old timer. Oh, but he looks awful. Who is he? What a blood in now, now, come on, come on. Help me get him inside. He's cold. His wrist is cold. Yeah, shock, I think. Come on, in with him. All right, now, let him down on the chair. There you are, Pop. Were you in an accident? No. No, some hoodlum was beating him up. I, I chased him off. Oh, that's awful. Did you call the police? There weren't any police there. I'm going to crack this whole situation wide open with this story. Hey, Mom! Hey! Wow! Never mind. Go into the bathroom and bring out some towels. Ed, we'll need some bandages. And... Yeah, we'd uh, better get a blanket around him. A blanket? It's 90 degrees. It's for shock, son. Go ahead, Tommy. Okay, Mom. Ed, uh, I think he's coming too now. He's opening his eyes. No, no, you're you're all right, old timer. You're all right. Well, well, isn't this cozy? What's your name? Ash 
Hatch. And uh, first name? That's it. Oh, oh, then uh, what's your last name? I don't know. All right, all right. Uh, take it easy. What happened? Who was that hoodlum? Did you ever see him before? I don't remember. Well, why was he hitting you? I, I don't know. I, uh, I don't remember. Hmm. You missing any money? I'm not sure. Well, I suppose I scared him off before he could rob you. Yes. Oh, uh, oh yes. You rescued me, didn't you? I'm really very grateful. I, uh... Uh, Don't try to talk too much now. You'll feel better after you've had something to eat. Ed, we have nothing in the house. We were just going to have a salad. Well, salad's all right. Well, Ed, I... I think maybe we'd better get Mr. Ash to a hospital or to his house or something. Oh, look, Nana, I told you why I want him Ed, here. please. Come inside. Well, what's the matter with you? Come inside. Okay. Uh, you you just sit right here, Mr. Ash. I'll be right back. I, I just... Uh, yes, to... I'll, uh, I'll be all right now. Nan, what's the matter with you? Get rid of him. What? Get him out of here. But, but why? He give me the willies. Oh, no, it's just the heat. Well, if you must know, he leered at me. He... Oh, Nan, he's an old man. He's just been beat up and, and in shock. Ed, please. Oh, no. I've got to keep him here. He's my proof. I'll write a story that'll rip the administration wide open and Jones can't pull it out because I've got the proof right here and I was the eyewitness. But, Ed... No. He stays here, and that's all there is to it. Recover pretty quickly. I suppose mostly because I'd gotten there in time. As a matter of fact, he began to talk, and he kept it up through the whole meal. And it was the craziest story you ever heard. He insisted he'd come from another world outside our solar system, where people existed in a kind of liquid state, bouncing about for the most part like large water-filled bladders. They were, however, capable of taking almost any shape their superior mind willed. They could flatten and drift about on the water, or they could inflate and rise in the air. As a matter of fact, they can even become facsimiles of other living things, taking on the shape and texture and coloration, a capability which adds greatly in their main function of traveling as missionaries of goodness among the peoples of the galaxy. Goodness? Oh, yes. They're perfect. As perfect as angels. All right, all right. I've had enough. I asked for it. Nan, where are you going? Don't rush off. Well, I guess I know when I'm being kidded. Very funny, Mr. Ash. But I'm not kidding. Don't tell me that you're a, a missionary to Earth. Oh, no, I'm here because I was banished. Oh, sort of a fallen angel. <laughs> exactly. Look, Ash, it's too hot for games. If, if you don't want to explain what happened this afternoon, that's your privilege. But as you know, this story means a lot to me. And I did stick my neck out to you. One moment, my boy. Let me finish. You see, I'm a throwback. A what? A throwback, an atavism. They tried to reform me, you know, but there was something rather fundamental about me, something rather evil. But, of course, as a last resort, they put me into one of the machines and they threw the switch. Oh, sure, sure, they, they killed you. Look, I'm not in the mood for shaggy dog stories. They didn't kill me, exactly. It was sort of like water being scraped over the edge of a sharp rock. When I came to, I was drifting through space. And then, of course, much later, I landed on Earth. Oh, I've had many shapes through the years, mainly people who died. I find that's much more convenient. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, look, look, if you'll excuse me, I have to make a telephone call. I'll, I'll just go into the other room. I dare say you want to call the hospital. I'm not psychotic, really. I've got ice coffee. Oh, yes, you're just in time, Mrs. Potter. I think perhaps I'd better prove my story, if you'll wait just a moment. You see, it's done by the generation of a high electrostatic field. Something like this. If you'll notice, my face begins to lose definition. It moves as if it had a life of its own. Now what? Stop it. Considerably younger, doesn't it? Thirty 
years younger. Thirty years just dropped away like... like... Listen, this story will set the whole country on its ear with my byline on it. Oh, Ed, Ed, don't let him take you in. It's a trick. It's mass hypnotism or something. I saw it. I saw it right here. So did you. I'll have an exclusive. Life will have to come to me for the story. I've got to admit that I could share something of Anne's point of view. He wasn't really very pleasant. As a matter of fact, he had what you'd call a colossal gall. After supper, he came right down to cases. Naturally, if I'm to stay here and keep my identity secret until you can arrange for an exclusive story, I will need a little pocket money. Uh, how much? How much you got? Well, I don't know. I got about uh, $22, and payday is until Thursday. Well, how about your bank account? Hey, hey now, now, wait a minute. Well, we'll see what we can arrange later. I am a little tired, though. I think it's about time to go to bed. Ah, I noticed a rather comfortable bed in here. Well, I'll see you all in the morning. Good night. And uh, thank you again for rescuing me. And that's our bedroom. I know. Well, you go right in there and tell him that he can't Listen. sleep. He locked the door. Oh, Ed, do something. All right. You uh, get some sheets from the linen closet and I'll make up the couch. Next day, I made careful inquiries, started to feel around for contacts on live at the AP, someplace to really break the story big. About five in the afternoon, Jones, the publisher, called me into his office. Sit down, Ed. I've got some good news. Now, look, Mr. Jones, ever since you left me out on a limb at the mayor's... Oh, office, now, I don't not worry about that, Ed. We've got something very interesting going for us now that changes everything. They've... They've arrested a gang of kids for shoplifting. Well, well, one of them is Tommy, your son. What? Arrested Tommy? Wait, Ed, don't go off half-cocked. It's a break, don't you see? You can cover delinquency with the lid off now. You'll be riding as a parent in the same boat with other parents. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? At the police station, I had the distinct feeling they'd been waiting for me. Well, Miss Potter, we meet under unfortunate circumstances. Can the phony sympathy, Thompson? Just let me see my boy. We'd better have a little talk first about all those articles you're writing about the police force. I've got no talking to do. This is a lousy frame-up against me and the paper. Now, you get my son out here and do it fast. You don't understand, Mr. Potter. Your son is in trouble. He's been identified as leading a gang of kids who spent most of the morning shoplifting in the stores all over town. That's nonsense. How could my boy do anything like that? He, he's only 12. Who identified him, anyway? The shopkeepers and the other members of the gang. You can see him, Mr. Potter, but I still think we'll want to have our little talk. Son, what's this all about? It was Ash. Ash? <laughs> yes, I told him about the gang. What the heck are you talking about? Some of the fellows got together and built art for a clubhouse. What does the gang do? Oh, different things. One of the fellows is a 22, and we hunt rats, and... Well, go ahead. What is it? We smoke. Oh. And what else? That's all honest. What about shoplifting? No, that was Ash. He warned me to talk the gang into shoplifting, but I wouldn't. Th then he changed himself to look like me and talked the fellas into it when I wasn't around. I only knew about it because I ran into them after they'd robbed their store. Who is this Ash he keeps talking about? Why, he's... Well, he, he's a man... Oh, never mind. I... Listen, the, the boy's beside himself because of all he's been through. Will you let me take him home with me? Of course, Mr. Potter, but the charges still hold. Don't forget to stop in and have our little talk before you report back to juvenile court. I called the house, and Ash answered the phone. I'm glad you called, Ed. I'm out of cash, you know. I, I need a small loan. Now, listen to you. 
The police have picked up Tommy. He's been charged with the shoplifting you did today. Oh, now I'm sorry about that. You see, there's a certain cultural difference between you and me. I, I didn't understand. You're going to help me get him out, you hear? You're going to tell everybody the truth. Well, of course. Of course I will. Now listen, I'm coming home. Nan will be back from her mother's any minute. Don't you tell her about this, you hear? Well, of course I won't. I'll be waiting right here. I suppose I was a fool, but I still wanted that story. I wanted it so bad I could taste it. The exclusive account of an extraterrestrial being. Driving home, I had it all figured out. I'd bring Ash down to the police station. He'd tell the story, go through his changing act to convince them, and spring Tommy. I'd have my story already filed and beat everybody. In the meantime, I just hoped Nan wouldn't spoil everything alone with it. Alone with it. And then suddenly I let my foot come down on the accelerator like it was made out of lead. I pulled the car to a stop and sprinted up the driveway. Nan! Nan, where are you? against the wall. Her shoulders were scratched and her lip cut. She held a heavy book hand, poised to strike at Ash, who was in front of her, moving stealthily forward. He turned as I came in, and I froze in amazement. I couldn't recognize him. And then, all at once, I realized I was looking at the spitting image of myself. And, and I knew it wasn't you. I knew it wasn't you. Well, if you'll both excuse me, come back here. I'll get you. I'll get you. circled the house. I spotted him rushing down the street, and I caught him around the corner at the same spot where I'd first seen him. Let go of me! You've got this coming to you! You've got this coming to you! I slugged him. Yet I knew it was useless the instant the blow landed. He felt just like sponge rub. Yet I kept hitting him. I didn't bother listening to his cries, even after he changed himself back to an old man. And then suddenly I felt a hand grab my shoulder and whirl me around. And a fist exploded in my eye. What's the matter with you? What do you think you're doing, beating up an old man like that? You know, good hood am I out of... I searched desperately for an explanation. And then, abruptly, without having said a word, I reeled and stumbled down the street. Home. To Nan. Minus One, presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features Shadow World by Clifford D. Simak. Of all the upsetting phenomena, the most alarming was this. I had a little shadow that went in and out with me. It's in Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, X-1 has brought you The Scapegoat, written by Richard Maples and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in our cast were Carl Weber as Ed, Wendell Holmes as the changeable Mr. Ash, Jane Amar as Nan, Bobby Alford as Tommy, Guy Rep as Mr. Jones, and Roger DeCoven as Thompson. This is Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Kenneth McGregor and is an NBC Radio Network production.